welcome everyone to our celebration. Now, my apologies to those who are watching online, but as I was vesting, I know Matt was rehearsing the song that we're going to do later on. Is that a, a preparation? Or? Okay. And I was like, this is a Catholic church? Everybody was singing. It sounded beautiful. So I hope it comes out that way going forward. So my apologies again for those of you who are at home. But as we enter into these sacred mysteries, we hear today about the Beatitudes. The Beatitudes that we're blessed if we do certain way of things and the way we live. And we'll talk more about that at the homily. But as we enter into these sacred mysteries, we remember the times that perhaps we haven't always lived the life of the Beatitudes. So we ask God for pardon and peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of the world. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. A reading from the book of Revelation. 
John saw another angel come up from the east, holding the seal of the living God. He cried out in a loud voice to the four angels who were given power to damage the land and the sea. Do not damage the land or the sea or the trees until we put the seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. I heard the number of those who had been marked with the seal. 144,000 marked from every tribe of the Israelites. After this, I had a vision of a great multitude, which no one could count, from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white, white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, Salvation comes from our God, who is seated on the throne and from the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They prostrated themselves before the throne, worshipped God, and exclaimed, Amen. Blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor, power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders spoke up and said to me, Who are those wearing white robes, and where do they come from? I said to him, My Lord, you are the one who knows. He said to me, These are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
a reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not been revealed. We do not know that when it is revealed, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. Everyone who has this hope based on Him makes himself pure as he is pure. <laughs> the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. John, 
is saying 144,000 people will be saved. But what if you 144,000 number two or number three? So in this, it's, it's an expression that says, it's pointing to the 12 tribe of Israel, etc. But then he goes on to say, and we don't always hear this, that a multitude of non-Jews will also be saved. And that's just his way of saying, it's going to be innumerable. We're not going to be able to count. Now, of course, God's going to be able to count, but we as humans aren't going to know the exact number of people who are saved. However, some groups, some faith traditions, will use that number and say, well, there's 144,000. Well, I would say in reply, well, if, if, if I get to be saved, who am I bumping out? Because I would imagine over the 2,000 years plus years of uh, pre-Christ, there are at least 144,000 people already in heaven. So if someone's going to get in, someone's got to leave, right? However, if we live the Beatitudes as we heard in the Gospel today, we can become holy in this world and we can join others who have gone before us that we call saints. Now, I've said this a number of times before, that there's what we call the communion of saints. And many of us remember that from growing up. But there's three different categories, if you will, of saints. There's what I call the capital S saint. So while here on the property at Sacred Heart of Cairo, we have the chapel dedicated to St. Catherine of Siena, capital S saint. Then we also have in Greenville, as you know, St. John the Baptist, another capital S saint. And the list goes on and on. Today we celebrate all the saints. We give, we give thanks to God and praise for their witnesses, their companionship of all who we call saints. The capital S saints are those gone before us, recognized by the church. A couple of examples that I just gave. Lowercase s would be those who have gone before us and not necessarily recognized by the church. But we would recognize them, and some of them may be relatives or friends. How many of you have ever said or heard the expression, my saintly mother? my saintly spouse, something like that. Or perhaps we've known someone else who has done a wonderful job in life, raising families or reaching out to the poor, living the Beatitudes. They are in heaven, we believe. They are just not formally recognized by the church. What about the third category? Who would they be? The third category would be someone who's still alive, who is living the Beatitudes, who is living a life worthy of Christ and prayer, and that we can look to for that glimpse of God, a glimpse of God's face, who are living the baptism. Now, I've used her before, and if she's watching, she's probably going to call me and say, please don't do that. But this woman that I've known probably for... 40 years or so, if not longer. She has volunteered for many, many, many years in Corpus Christi, Maine. When I started there, I was a late teenager, and then I met her probably over time and got to be friendly with her later on. I think right, uh, right before I went into the seminary, actually, a year after college, I was looking for a part-time job. She worked at a bank. She had an opening. I worked for her part-time. But I knew her more from the church. And somewhere over time, I made a comment to her that said something to the effect of, well, Irene, you're going to be on the express elevator, or you already are. When you die, you're going to go right to heaven. And she said, no, 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 no. You don't know me. You don't know my life. And I'm going, well, this is what I know about Irene. Irene never married. She took care of her parents, but they became elderly and they subsequently passed away. 
She took care of her older sister. She took care of her younger sister. I think there was even another sister. She took care of one of her brothers-in-law. All the while working until she was about 65 or so. And continuing volunteering. She has volunteered, and as last I talked to her a couple of weeks ago, she has volunteered since she was 14 years old. She is now 94. And other than limited hours because of the pandemic, she was there probably six, if not seven days or nights a week, volunteering. She is a glimpse of the face of God. I don't know her you know, spiritual life or whatever. I see her, even when I go down to Long Island, which has been a while at this point. But I see her at church all the time, whether in the rectory or in the church praying, going to Mass. She prays for others. She's, pray she's been praying for me. I've told you, she's the woman that prayed for me when I didn't even know I had a vocation. And she, she would send me notes saying, well, if you don't want to be a priest, how about a permanent deacon? And I'm like, this woman is going to drive me nuts if I don't become something. But her persistence in prayer for everyone that she knows is a glimpse of what it's like to live the Beatitudes for us to look at someone like that, and, and we probably all know that, a person like that, that helps us in our time of need get us closer to God. Because all of us, by our virtue of our baptism and confirmation, are called to live the Beatitudes. So let's look at just a couple of examples in today's Gospel. As the second reading reminds us, John reminds us, that we are all called children of God. Not to be children of God, that we are children of God. And as such, in this world, torn by war and violence and terrorism and hatred and racism and the list goes on and on, we are called to be peacemakers. In a world full of consumerism, materialism, or excess, we are called to be poor in spirit. In the face of injustice, we are invited to thirst for the righteousness of God. And the last example today. Blessed are you when others insult you or persecute you or utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of Jesus Christ. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. So if we follow and live the Beatitudes, we'll live a life of holiness and be called saints, lower S saints, by others here on earth and maybe even be recognized ultimately as a capital S saint or be informally welcomed into the communion of saints because our reward is and will be great in heaven. We gather today to remember, to celebrate, and to thank all those saints who lead us and have led us closer to God which I hope and pray are more than 144,000. say our apostles' creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and died, and was buried. He descended into hell. And on the third day, he rose again from his dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The saints in heaven intercede for us with God, who hears every prayer. That the worldwide church will always draw strength and perseverance, as exemplified by all the unnamed saints who stayed true to their calling, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have our prayer. That all who have suffered violence of war be blessed with lasting peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have our prayer. That all who hunger for and thirst for righteousness be blessed with the fullness of truth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we have prayer. That all who grieve the loss of a loved one be blessed with healing and acceptance. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we have prayer. That all those affected by abuse in the world find healing and transformation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we have prayer. That all who gather at this feast physically and spiritually, be blessed with unity in Christ Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all the names in our books of prayer petitions in our three worship sites, and for all who have died, especially Marie Squir Squirrel, especially those who died during this pandemic, And we remember, in a special way, Con Morgan, Maddie Amber, Jody Shades, Brendan Pepperman, James T. McClone, Felix and Lily Chan Tiano, Maureen Cook, Michael McGinnity. And in thanksgiving for the Lord's blessing on the wedding anniversary of Anna and Arthur Zekian, and all in our one faith community, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Holy, immortal God, you preserve your people in times of trial. Hear our prayers which we join to those of the saints in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We'll have two collections today. The first one is to support the parish. The second one is to support the disaster relief fund of the bishops for those who are affected by earthquakes or hurricanes or fires, etc. So we appreciate your generosity. And those of you who are watching online, you can mail in your donations or go online and donate to our parish. And we'll make sure that we um, pass that along appropriately. Thank you very much.
grace, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all his holy church. May these offerings we bring in the honor of all the saints be pleasing to you, O Lord, and grant that just as we believe the saints to be already assured of immortality, so we may experience their concern for our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Amen. your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks and praise lord holy father almighty and eternal god for today by your gift we celebrate the festival of your city the heavenly jerusalem our mother where the great array of our brothers and sisters already gives you eternal praise Towards her, we eagerly hasten as pilgrims, advancing by faith, rejoicing in the glory bestowed upon those exalted members of the church, through whom you give us, in our frailty, both strength and good example. And so we glorify you with the multitude of saints and angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy Cyprian, 
Lawrence, Chrysogenes, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, Rita and Martha and Mary, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept the oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, Jesus took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he sent the blessing broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. The story of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven. Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne to the hand, by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and blessing through Christ our Lord. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us, marked with the sign of faith, and rest in the sleep of peace. And we remember all our deceased loved ones. Grant them, O Lord, we pray. And all who sleep in Christ, in 
place of refreshing light and peace. To us also your servants, through those sinners, hope to hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Catherine of Siena, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Carol, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Bernard, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company with not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these things good, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Receive communion. 
I will offer it to you. You reply, please reply with amen or amen. I'll have a mask on so you can take yours off to consume the body and then continue out to your car in silence. Appreciate it. We also pray our spiritual communion prayer at this point, which is on the worship day. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you, never permitting me to be separate from you. Amen. Amen. We seek to better understand the issues and concerns that confront our community, state, and country, and how the gospel compels us to respond as faithful citizens in our community. We ask for eyes that are free from blindness so that we might see each other as sisters and brothers, one and equal in dignity, especially those who are victims of abuse and violence, deceit and poverty. We ask for ears that will hear the cries of children unborn and those abandoned, women and men oppressed because of race or creed, religion or gender. We ask for minds and hearts that are open to hearing the voice of leaders who bring us closer to your kingdom. We pray for discernment 
so that we may choose leaders who hear your word, live your love, and keep in the ways of your truth as they follow in the steps of Jesus and his apostles and guide us to your kingdom of justice and peace. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, and through the power of the Holy Spirit, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for your participation. That is from the United States Catholic Conference of the Bishops uh, website. If you just look up uh, 2020 election prayer, it should come up if you'd like to pray again. Um, also, our faith formation children, the verse is Mark 11, 25. So that's the Gospel of Mark, chapter 11, verse 25. And a few announcements in the bulletin. Uh, of course, there's information tomorrow. We're having an online Mass for All Souls Day. All those uh, who have uh, asked for prayers and have uh, put, in, put in the names, who we're praying for, and all our beloved deceased. And then, since it's November now, we can talk about Christmas. I think it's been Christmas set in the stores since, what, July 4th or something? So, uh, but we're for, for Masses, okay? Right now we do three Masses. Christmas time we usually do more. The problem is, or the need is, we need much more, many more volunteers. If we have a second Mass here, for example, we need to sanitize it both beforehand and afterwards, okay? Christmas is on a Friday, so Thursday would be Christmas Eve, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, etc. So we need extra help. If we don't get extra help, the first 75 people will come. That's it. Bye-bye. And then the next 100, we can't accommodate. That's at one place. Okay. I'm permitted by uh, the bishop and canon law, I believe, to do three Masses on Christmas Eve and three Masses on Christmas Day. And I'm happy to do that if we get the volunteers. We're going to need lectors, ushers, Eucharistic ministers, etc. Okay, as well as the sanitizers. So I want to, I would ask you to please pray about it. And, you know, consider calling the office and volunteering. Also, we'll be starting a reservation system later in the month of November. We'll try it out a couple of weeks to see, make sure that it's, uh, it works for us. It's a, it's a typical one that many other parishes throughout the country are using. So it's not like we're creating our own. Um, we'll just see how it works in our uh, one faith community. Uh, so look for that in the coming weeks. But also in the bulletin about uh, our normal giving tree, we're going to have to do it a little differently this year, so there's information about that. Um, and then uh, thank you to those who participated in the second collection today. Next week there's another second collection for the support of our parish and helping us in the pandemic time and, and catching up. Um, and then uh, please remember to follow the instructions of the ushers. To stay the six feet apart. At all three Masses every weekend, everybody seems to line up like we're at communion time normally. Can't do that. If you came together, you drove and shared your germs. But if, if you didn't, you need to stay six feet apart and keep your mask on until you receive communion, except, of course, those at home. And then the last prayer for today is that God's will be done on Election Day this, this, uh, this year. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thank you. Thank you. Sacred Heart of Jesus. Have mercy on us. Our Lady of God. Saint John the Baptist. Pray for us. Have a great weekend.